what a great story that is. And um, we really thank Vanessa for um, doing all those brilliant paintings uh, to help us enjoy that story. We're going to actually do today a little bit different. Uh, we're going to think about that story that we've just heard um, and look at it with the verses uh, from Ephesians. So make sure you've got the uh, verses uh, printed out uh, and ready to look at as we go through. Again, we'll have some questions and things to think about and pray about as we go through. Um, so we're looking at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 uh, to the end of that chapter. And in the, uh, on the handout you have, the title is called The Old and the New Life. So we're thinking about um, how we as Christians, as people that know Jesus, have been given a new life and what it means for us to live that out. So let's look at the first uh, couple of verses together. Verse 17 says, I tell you this in the name of the Lord. You must not live any longer like the people of the world who do not know God. Their thoughts are foolish, their minds are in darkness, they are strangers to the life of God. And that's a bit like Hamid in the story, isn't it? He was a stranger to the life of God. His mind was in darkness. In fact, he walked in darkness, hiding because he'd got those eggs in his hands, having to stay in the shadows, away from the nurse. He was afraid to come into the light. But that light makes all the difference in the dark world. And if you're a Christian, if you believe in Jesus, then the light has come on. And you can see those things that aren't good and aren't right. And we're told to walk in the light, not to be a stranger uh, to the ways of God anymore, but to walk in his ways. And that's what Paul wants to tell us today. Look at the next verse. In verse 20, Paul says, You did not learn anything like this from Christ. If you've heard of him and have learned from him, put away the old person you used to be. Have nothing to do with your old sinful life. It was sinful because of being fooled into following bad desires. Think of Hamid with those eggs in the kitchen. He had a desire to take them. He thought how good they would taste. And he was so used to living, uh, just taking what he needed, that he wasn't really worried about doing something wrong. He just was thinking about the eggs. His desires uh, were just leading him astray. Why don't you pause this for a minute and think about some of the desires you might have, or sometimes have, that might lead you astray. Do you sometimes feel you should do something or feel tempted to do something and it gets you in a mess? Why don't I have a talk about those things now? Maybe you thought of some things that you still struggle with. Or maybe you thought of things that you used to struggle with, uh, but you don't anymore. Things that you used to do wrong, but you've stopped doing. And if that's true for you, then that's great. Because we are meant to, as the light comes on in our lives and as we start walking with Jesus and have him in our hearts, we are meant to start seeing things that are wrong and choosing not to do them anymore. So it's really good if you can say, I used to be like that, but actually I'm, I'm getting better. I'm being more like Jesus. That's what we want for, for all of us. Look at the next verse. Paul says in verse 23, let your minds and hearts be made new. And again, one of the uh, things I love about the story of Hamid is when he goes back to the nurse's house and his knees are all cut and his clothes are all rags and she cleans his wounds. She bathes him and makes his knees better and then she gives him new clothes to wear. And Hamid, when he's wearing these new clothes and thinking about the day he's just been through, he thinks actually those eggs that he wanted so much, he'd rather not have them because now he's got this new set of clothes and he's been... Uh, he feels new, probably inside as well. And that's what we're meant to feel. We're meant to know that God has made us new and given us new clothes to wear, a new life to lead. And actually that's far better than walking in the dark and getting into that horrible mess. That's a picture that we can all think about each day, that we're putting on this new life and living this new life like a new set of clothes, which is so great for us to have. Why don't you pause this now and look at verses 25 to 29. See if you can find the four ways Paul says we should be different as our hearts and minds are made new. Did you find the four ways Paul said 
We should be different. Well, let's uh, go through them together. The first one was that we should stop lying to each other. Hopefully you saw that there, that we should tell the truth to our neighbours. There are lots of different reasons uh, we might lie. Uh, we might lie to try and get out of trouble. Uh, we might lie thinking it will make us look better. But if you remember, coming into the light means you don't have to hide anything anymore. It's actually better to just be honest and tell the truth and speak the truth to people. We don't need to be afraid to show who we really are. Think about Hamid. All the trouble he had was because he was trying to be dishonest, not telling the truth, trying to hide. But actually, he was far better when he spoke the truth and when everything was clear. So that's number one, don't lie. And then the next one is Paul talks about how we deal with uh, our feelings of anger or when we feel angry. It's really easy to feel angry, isn't it? And yet in these verses, we're told when you feel angry, because things can upset us and make us feel cross. When you're angry, we shouldn't go to bed like that. He says, if you are angry, do not let it become sin. Get over your anger before the day is finished. Don't let the devil start working in your life. So the second thing is anger. When you're feeling cross, it can bleed you back into feeling a bit like Hamid with his dirty clothes on. All a mess and frustrated and horrible. Well, we don't go to bed in dirty clothes. I hope you don't anyway. We take those things off and go to bed in nice pyjamas. And when, as Christians, we come to the night time, if we know that we're feeling cross about something or angry about something, Paul tells us, don't go to bed like that. Take that off. Remember, that's your old you. You don't need to feel like that anymore. Take some time with Jesus. Pray to him. Tell him about it. And if you have chance, if it's a brother or sister or mum or dad that have made you feel crushed, you can talk to them about it. And then you'll go to bed feeling fresh and, and, uh, and all new and good. So Paul says, uh, go to bed having put your new clothes on, taking the old dirty ones off. And verse 27 says, do not let the devil start working in your life. Now that sounds like a weird thing to say, but all he's saying is, actually, you've got this new life you can live. Don't let the devil make you feel like you have to wear those old clothes and be the old you. You don't have to be. God's given you a new heart. He's made you clean and new. He forgives you and lets you start over and over again with him. So um, get rid of the dirty clothes each night and get rid of the anger and those feelings and then uh, be made new, ready for the next day. So that's the second one. The third one is anyone who steals must stop it. He must work with his hands so he'll have what he needs and can give to those who need help. Again, a bit like Hamid with his eggs. Stealing didn't do him any good. In fact, he said, oh, I'd much rather just have these clean clothes than those eggs that I stole. And we similarly don't need to steal or do anything like that because actually God will provide for us. And it's much better just to walk with him. So don't steal any longer. And the reason for not stealing as well is actually God wants us to live a generous life where we give to others rather than just taking for ourselves. We actually feel, I want to give to others and make them see how good it is to be a Christian, to be with Jesus and to walk with him in our lives. So don't lie. Deal with that anger differently. Don't steal. And then fourth, we're told, watch your talk no bad words should be coming from your mouth. Say what is good. Your words should help others grow as Christians. These things are all to bless the, uh, the people around us. It's not to earn our way into God's good books. It's not to make us part of his family. All of this is because we are part of God's family. Now I know it's hard to um, always say the right thing and we do sometimes say really bad things that we wish straight away we hadn't but God wants to help us to walk slowly with him and be listening to him and stop ourselves when we're going to say something that isn't right that means listening to his spirit that we talked about a couple of weeks ago that lives inside us and knowing oh no God doesn't want me to say that what do you want me to say and taking that time just slowing down. It's a good way to deal with our anger as well. It's a good way to deal with our speech and the things we say. And think, let me say something that's encouraging. I know it's really hard. We need God's help 
We need his power, that Holy Spirit in us, uh, to help us change and say good things. In fact, look at the next verse, verse 30. Paul says, Do not make God's Holy Spirit have sorrow for the way you live. The Holy Spirit has put a mark on you for the day you will be set free. The Holy Spirit, if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And we've already uh, talked in previous weeks about praying for you to know that more and more. So as the Holy Spirit lives in you, it's like you're changed and the natural thing for you to do is to produce fruit. Just like an apple tree. It doesn't have to try really hard to produce apples. It produces apples because it is an apple tree. And actually you, as a Christian, are designed and made new by God to produce good fruit. So don't let the Holy Spirit feel sorrow or feel sad that he's inside you and yet you're not really letting him do all these good things. Listen to him. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you produce this good fruit. And the Holy Spirit is there to help you if you listen to him and, and let him lead you. When it says the Holy Spirit has put a mark on you for the day you'll be set free, that's just an encouragement that actually one day the wrestle and the fight trying to do what's right will be completely gone. Even before that day when we meet Jesus face to face and in the twinkling of an eye we'll be just like him as he is, even before that we can gradually become more and more like him, more and more holy, which is why the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us to make us holy, to make us more like God. So Paul is just encouraging us in these verses to be the child of God he's made you to be. And let all the fruit of the Spirit grow in you. We're going to have a song now all about the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and I just want you to enjoy it really and think about the fact that you have been made alive in Jesus and he wants you to have all the fruit of his Spirit in your life. Uh, have a listen and enjoy this song. If you want to dance around to it, that's great. <laughs> 